Hello and welcome to the episode 225 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, the Beatles make history with EP record sales, start another North American tour, and record two songs. On the 13th of August 1961, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed at the Casbah Coffee Club in Liverpool. As you will remember, the Casbah was in the cellar of the Best's home and was operated by Pete's mother, Mona. One year later, in 1962, the same lineup of the band had a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool and then, at night, took part to one of the regular beat nights at the Majestic Barroom in Crew, billed as the biggest rock since Blackpool Rock. This latter concert was the result of Beatles manager Brian Epstein's letter to Len Funkert, general manager of top-rank venues, as we explained in episode 179 of this podcast. In 1963, the Beatles' EP Twist and Shout became the first record of its kind to sell 250,000 copies. Not bad for an up-and-coming band. In the evening, at 6.30 and 8.50 pm, the Fabs, now with Ringo Starr on drums, played the second of six engagements at the Odeon Cinema in Ladidno, Wales. After the second show, the Beatles returned to Liverpool to celebrate their recent successes. On the 13th of August 1965, the Beatles landed in New York City, New York, at 2.30 pm local time. It was the start of their new North American tour. After the obligatory press conference, they were driven to the Warwick Hotel, where they would reside until the 17th of August. The tour turned out to be a crazy affair on par of the 1964 tour, worlds apart from the challenges of the pre-1963 fame, days that the band was starting to look back to pining for a time in which they could progress as musicians on stage, in which the audience could actually listen to what they were playing and they could enjoy a night out without being constantly besieged by fans. Back in early 1963, for example, they certainly couldn't afford having an entire hotel floor for themselves, as they had now, but they didn't have to have guards stationed on each entrance to avoid that some fun could sneak in. Another North American tour hit the second date and the second city in 1966. Tonight, the Beatles were at the Olympia Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, to perform two shows at 2 and 7 pm, in front of a total of 28,000 fans. The band arrived in town at 11 am and left at the end of the second show on a Greyhound bus, reaching Cleveland, Ohio, by 2.30 am. Meanwhile, in Texas, KLUE Radio organized a public bonfire in Longview to burn, and I quote, records and other symbols of the Beatles' popularity to protest against John Lennon's more popular than Jesus comment. Just to make things clear, as reported by Beatlesbible.com, Robert E. Scogging, the Grand Dragon of the South Carolina Ku Klux Klan, burnt a Beatles record on a large wooden cross. Well done showing them, Bobby! I bet Jesus was really pleased. And if you pleased with this podcast, Please stop the nonsense and visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to support this and the other music-related content I plan to complete for our little community here. Share the episode on your social, drop me a line or send me a little donation if you want. Be fab and make the difference. Thank you! In 1968, between 7 pm and 5 am, the Beatles kept on working on their next album at the EMI Studios. The order of the day was to record two Lennon songs. They began with a remake of Sexy Sadie with a new arrangement and John on vocals, George on guitar, Paul on piano and Ringo on drums. 
they record the day takes, starting with take 100. After that, the band tackled Year Blues. Inspired by George Harrison's vocal recording in the control room of the studio on the previous day, John insisted in recording the rhythm track in the Annex A next to the control room of Studio 2. It was a small room that could barely fit the four Beatles and their instruments, but they were eager to try anything to get a different sound. Fourteen takes of the rhythm track were recorded, followed by a reduction of take 6 into take 15 and 16, and part of take 14 into take 17. Then the song was edited by putting the beginning of take 17 on the end of take 16. Usually, such an edit would be completed later in the process, using two tracks for an easier and quicker job. This time, for no apparent reason, the edit was operated directly on the existing four-track recording. Anyhow, the edit is very audible in the final recording, happening after 3 minutes and 17 seconds from the beginning of the track. One more session in Abbey Road in 1969. A stereo mixdown of You Never Give Me Your Money was completed between 2.30 and 9.15 pm. And with this we can close today's episode. Tomorrow, among other things, we'll further look into the recording of another outtake from the White Album Sessions. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.